Just because you're an evil villain doesn't mean you don't feel the need to express yourself. After all, just look at the host of criminals, baddies and would-be world dominators out there who manage to work a show-stopping musical number into their evil schemes. These villains may not know basic morality, but they know their way around a toe-tapping chorus, and while they may have missed their shot at redemption, by golly, they never miss a beat. Take it away, Joker. It won't be long till I make you kill. Who'll be laughing then? Here are the villains who just had to sing, damn it! Along the way, beware spoilers for the following. going anywhere without me. Don't be shy. There's room up here on stage for two. <laughs> no, really, I insist. Some rules for singing are you must hit the right note, it's important to know when to breathe, and generally it's a whole lot harder to do when you're dead. However, one person who didn't get the memo is Joker from the Batman Arkham series. In Arkham Knight, after his demise in the previous game, the Joker has taken to getting right inside the head of bats. So much so that at one point when D-list Batman villain Johnny Charisma is dressed up as the Joker and puts on a show, Bats just sees the original, giggling away at him through song. Take it away, boys! Take me on home to the asylum. Never alone in the asylum. Side note to Charisma here, if you're that uninteresting that instead of watching you, Bats imagines a dead guy singing the song, maybe want to rethink the name, maybe like Johnny Rubbish Face or something. Joker's song, Look Who's Laughing Now, is a delightfully dark show tune, listing off lots of heinous things he's done or enjoyed to a big band backing track. I'm stuck in your head and I'm laughing. <laughs> I feel you with dread, and I can't stop laughing. Your parents are dead, and I can't stop laughing. His parents are dead? Oh, Joker, he's just finally managed to repress that. It took ages. <sighs> it's also a terrifying reminder that the Joker now knows all of Batman's secrets due to being inside of his head. See, the game is one long countdown to the Joker completely taking over his mind and forcing Bats to do awful things, something the Joker is only too happy to remind him of in song. Oh yeah! I think I can taste your fear. Now that my time is near. I'm in your blood, I'm so alive. I only wish you'd let me drive. It won't be long till I make you kill. Who'll be laughing then? So Batman would only be killing people because the Joker has taken over his mind, so... Loophole! However, as you listen to it while defusing bombs, you can't help but tap your toes along and let Mark Hamill's excellent Joker finish his tune. I killed all your friends and I can't stop laughing. I'm cock a doo doo, -doo. All because of you. Great song. Please don't take my brain. Come roll a bumpers. I hate floor shows. I remember my childhood in Brighton. They say if you want people to hate your villain, have them kick a dog. But if you really want people to hate your villain, have them kick a dog and then write a song about it. The knives are really out then for Conroy Bumpus, diminutive Brit rocker and animal cruelty enthusiast who you'll do battle against in Sam and Max Hit the Road. Conroy loves killing and collecting beasts, a hobby for which he's given himself the nickname, well, you tell him Conroy, take it away. Happy to be king of the creatures I'm proud to be the lord of the old I love collecting things with grotesque features It makes me feel like some champion god Oh, I trapped my first tiger before I could speak Conroy sets up his whole animal harming deal with this absurdly catchy rock and roll belter, which, as well as featuring quite a lot of groin thrusting, really blows the roof off the place with a chorus from the heads of animals he's dispatched. Hit it, boy. Okay, that's just grotesque, and we'll be filing a formal complaint just as soon as our hips stop whittling. 
Conroy gets his comeuppance in the end though, and his musical career is cut short when he and his henchman Lee Harvey, while trying to capture a Bigfoot, end up frozen in a block of ice and exhibited in a carnival of curiosities. How can we ever repay you? The blank looks on your faces are the only reward we need. Which is just as well, because the way he treats those animals is frankly inexcusable. I mean, we share a planet with these animals. The very least we... Oh, damn it, I'm at it again. Too many villains keep their evil schemes top secret. Not so the great mighty Pooh, who is extremely upfront about his intentions. I am the great mighty Pooh, and I'm going to throw my sh at you. Uh, thanks, mighty Pooh. I appreciate your honesty. It's very refreshing. That's the only thing that's refreshing, though, about this mound of malevolent faecal matter who floats onto the scene in the Sloprano chapter of Conker's Bad Fur Day and belts out an operatic, ahem, <clears throat> movement before flinging chunks of excreta at you. Your job is to dodge the turds until the great mighty Pooh opens wide for another verse, which is your opportunity to lob a bog roll into his feces-filled mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a sentence I hoped I'd never have to read aloud. But here we are. Hi mum. Still not a doctor. Getting a roll in his mouth triggers new bits of the song, which as you might expect become increasingly nauseating as the great mighty Pooh gets into the finer points of his, uh, whole deal. Wheat corn is the only thing that makes it through my rear. How do you think I keep this lovely grin? Have some more caviar. Oh god, but the song, sorry, I'm good, I can finish it, but the song reaches its epic climax with a call and response featuring Conker himself. When I've knocked you out with all my bab, I'm going to take your head and ram it off my butt. Your butt. My butt. Your butt. That's right, my butt. Ugh. My butt. Ugh. My butt. <laughs> butt. <laughs> yeah, hi mum. Look, I told you, seven years of medical school just wasn't for me. At Betcher Science, we do what we must because we can. For the good of all of us, except the ones who are dead. Artificial intelligence excels at three things. Chess, pretending to be people in chat rooms, and passive aggression. After you complete Portal's various puzzles using Aperture Science's nifty little gun, your guide GLaDOS tries to murder you, proving once and for all that the cake was definitely a lie and forcing you to destroy her. But you haven't heard the last of her. Oh no. As a treat upon completing the game, she sings you a song. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here, huge success. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. Oh, GLaDOS, you're truly happy for me. Oh, wait, she's being sarcastic, isn't she? Yep, like a British person saying thank you to the person who didn't thank them for holding the door open, GLaDOS is not happy about your actions and intends to not so subtly let you know about it. I'm not even GLaDOS, I'm sorry I killed you, but in fairness, you did try to kill me. And wait, how are you singing if you're dead? See, Alive is not just referring to Chell escaping death. Yup, this song isn't purely a guilt trip, or simply a continuation of the lie about cakes, but a gradual realisation for the player that GLaDOS isn't that easy to get rid of. Goodness, 
Stardust. Those lyrics are so clever. I think you should focus on your great songwriting career and less on killing people who have wronged you. Just, just an idea. And you! You've taken my pride, you scrapped my rocket dojo, laid waste to my laboratory, broke my televisions, and murdered countless Williamses. All I wanted was a date! This and now! You might think that with a name like Skullmageddon, the villain of Double Dragon Neon would have a penchant for, say, heavy metal? And when you meet him for the first time in the game, you could again fairly assume that this is one bad guy who likes his music to thrash hardcore, on account of him being an undead sorcerer made of bones with an accent worthy of a dodgy Iron Maiden tribute band. I'm your worst nightmare! Skullmageddon! But you know what they say happens when you assume? Skullmageddon kills you. Or at least he tries to in the game's final confrontation, when it turns out his musical tastes are closer to feisty character numbers that would be more at home on a Broadway stage. When he inevitably loses and you shove him into space, that's Skullmageddon's cue to deliver a powerful song over the game's end credits. Although Skullmageddon is already well and truly defeated by this point, it's hard not to feel that he at least gets the moral victory for this rousing, introspective vocal solo. I'm on a Maybe tomorrow won't bring me sorrow. It makes us wonder if Skullmageddon didn't miss his calling as a West End composer, because this little number is almost impossible not to dance to. Joy beating me down. Unless you can't dance, of course. It's heel toe heel. Right, got it. What could be more terrifying than a ghost singing opera, apart from attending an opera or talking or thinking about opera? Ooh. But this next villain doesn't give a blues clue whether or not you're petrified, as he's the final boss of Spooky Trails, a whole world in Mario plus Rabbids kingdom battles devoted to paranormal horrors. The Phantom, as he's styled, is a house-sized operatic rabid spirit who shows up to murder Mario and indeed appears to have a massive chip on his spectral shoulder about Nintendo's famous mascot. Who's done me a thousand wrongs ever since Donkey Kong Seethering down every pipe despite his plum-shaped body type Hey, nobody shaming Mario! Besides, he can jump four times his own height. Dude must have thighs like a CrossFit champion. Phantom's octave clambering performance is in fact a pretty epic diss track, one that pokes fun at Mario's catchphrases, it's a me, right, go, the only word you know. famous tropes of Mario's platforming past, you saw not worth the hustle. Your princess is an and even jokes about the race-ruining powers of the blue spiny shell, the worst thing to happen to anyone who's ever played Mario Kart. You're first and doing so well, but here come the spiny shell. <laughs> hey, we have a rule, Phantom, and that's that we don't joke about the blue spiny shell, not since the OX Office Mario Kart tournament. Things were said, things were forgiven, but not forgotten. Luke. Phantom's savage burns clearly don't hurt Mario's self-confidence too much, though, 
as after a prolonged shootout, Phantom is finally brought to heel by everyone's favourite plumber, at which point he gets what every performer dreams of, a death scene under a centre stage spotlight. And boy does Phantom milk it. <laughs> Jeez, haven't seen such terrible acting since Luke insisted he thought it was a green shell he fired on lap three. But that's all behind us now. Like you were all behind me, suckers! Son of a... No, oh, no, no, not again, no! I'm Mr. King Dice, he just what I say. The devil has his price, and I'll make sure you pay. In Cuphead, King Dice is a king pain in the neck. Not only does he convince you you can't lose, thus facilitating the woeful deal with the devil that kicks off the story, but he won't let you anywhere near the devil until you get all the contracts he needs. Yes, step into the die house, trying to get to another island, and you will hear his excellent song. I'm Mr. King Dice, I'm the gamest in the land. Play nice. I'm the devil's right -hand man. Not only is he a dapper dresser, but he's an excellent rhythm and blues singer, and he explains why he's barring your path with the use of fancy words like assiduously. If you haven't finished your task, haven't worked assiduously, no, I cannot let you pass. Don't you mess with me. Tell you where else we're not going to mess with him? Spelling bee. But our favourite bit about it is the chorus, complete with backing singers that we can't help but join in with. Don't mess with King Dice. Don't mess with King Dice. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with him. Don't mess with King Dice. Don't mess with King Dice. Don't mess with me. However, when you meet him later on for a big fight, he's far less jovial or full of song, throwing his minions at you and punishing them severely should they lose. <laughs> Cruel, but on the other hand, you do have to admire the fact that he managed to rhyme assiduously. I mean, the best that I got was deciduous tree. Oh, boo! Look, I didn't say it was good. Still, though, boo. That's it for this list, but I know that some of our most loyal fans will have been hoping to see us dance around to You Are Dead from the game Total Distortion somewhere on this list, and to those people just have to say one, uh, unfortunately it's not really a great example because it's not really clear if the villain sings it or not, and two, screw it, let's rock! Thought you were hot, guess what? You're not. You are dead, dead, dead. You brought your whole adventure to a screeching halt. You are dead, dead, dead. Worked up quite a sweat there. Anyway, those are some of the villains in games who just could not help but sing. But if you can think of any more singing bad guys, then let us know in the comments. And if you want to watch another video, which I'm certain you do, if, if you really think about it, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well then check out this one up here. That's another video from us. It's about uh, times that the villain was cooler than you. Down here is one from our sister channel, Outside Xbox. It's about the catchiest songs in games. Uh, it's got some really catchy video game tunes in there. And if you enjoyed this, then why not subscribe as well and ring that bell. And we will see you guys next time. Goodbye.